Hello, Leapers. This is Chris. And join me today in welcoming our very special guest, Mr. Nate Walker, who appeared in the episode Ben Song for the Defense. Nate, welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast. Hey, Chris. How you doing, man? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, we're we're so happy to be speaking to you. It's funny we've been um, giving everybody in this episode because it had so many guest stars that uh, you know we we have mean judge and um, right. avuncular attorney, and we we're calling you Naked Tyler. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, for for those of you listening and maybe not watching, um, Nate was the uh, defendant that uh, Ben was helping write in the leap in, who was found naked outside of his house and in, in, in a stolen car. We think maybe allegedly, but, uh, allegedly. yeah, <laughs> allegedly. So so Nate, welcome to the podcast. Um, usually we'd like to get things going just by asking uh, the guest stars that we talk to about about their background. Um, you know, what led you into the business and how did you uh, land the role on Quantum? Man, um, I actually started acting because I got laid off of a job. Um, so uh, I guess that's kind of an interesting story. Um, I, I used to live in Virginia, in Hampton, Virginia, and they used to have a bunch of big call centers. So like the biggest Sprint call center, which is now T-Mobile, uh, they had a Verizon call center, they had a T-Mobile call center. So I was working in the Sprint call center and it's closed now. So one day they were laying, they were like doing layoffs and I was a part of one of those cuts. So, you know, it's like 930 in the morning. I've got nothing to do. So I'm like going to go to the mall, get myself some some bad Chinese food and a t-shirt mm. or something to make myself feel better. Um and his casting director was in between offices because they were being renovated. And so he was doing the auditions in the guest home um, of his luxury apartments that I was passing. And I saw the casting sign. And so I just crashed the casting call because, mm. you know, I had nothing going on. And um, and then from there, he said he liked me. I got I got a call back. Um, and that's really that's how I stumbled my way into being an actor. Is it the first time you had ever tried acting that was my in first any way? anything? Like I go in the room, he's like, "Yeah, okay." He's like, "Do you have your you have a headshot?" And I was like, "I, I, I you know, I'm here." You know, like <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, it was it was it was crazy. Um, and so I go I go do that callback. I actually ended up booking that. It was a, a indie film, um, and then from there it was just a lot of catching up. Like, okay, let me you know learn what's happening here. Start trying to find acting classes. You know get your headshots, trying to build your resume and, you know, learning about the business. But yeah, that was my introduction. So it was, um, it was really cool. Um, it's not like LA to where, you know, you get a call back and, you know, it's like right down the street or everything's virtual now because I was in Virginia, the callback was actually like a four hour drive away for me to go to. So it was, um, hmm. it was kind of a lot of going on faith. I'm glad I did. Um, you know, I, I would, I, at that time, I definitely would not have guessed that I had moved, I would be moving to LA to, you know, pursue acting. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that's quite a leap of faith. So, I mean, how long yeah. ago was that? Oh, I think that was maybe eight years now, I think. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Not for, for a fair, fair amount of time. So. Yeah. You know, I've been in, been in L.A. for about four now. So, yeah. That's great. So, I mean, um, I was looking at some of your background information and it seems like you've tried to, uh, as breaking into the industry, become sort of a jack of all trades and do um, just about everything you could. So take me from that day in Virginia, which is not exactly like an acting capital, as you said, that four hour drive. I mean, yeah, and how did you cool. progress into the business and, and break in? And was it was it on the East Coast and then the West Coast? How how did it evolve? Yeah. It, yeah, it was it was kind of one of those things, like you said, with the background, it was it was kind of just me. Um, like, I, like I said, I ended up being cast in that initial independent film, but then they lost their funding. So it just went away. And so I ended up going back to the casting director and I was like, hey, you know, just this audition process has me really intrigued. Is there anything else that you have going on? Um, and so that led to me doing a lot of terrible, terrible projects like I've been in. I've, I've, I've been like in backyard projects on handy cams, you know, like just anything that I could get my hands into to where I get to like be in front of a camera, you know, I just started jumping into that. Um, so it was a slow process. Um, it was a year and a half before I found, you know, found acting classes that, you know, were worth their salt in Virginia to where you can learn the business. So um, what the route that I took is I decided to stay in Virginia um, until I was SAG eligible, you know, until I got mm. like a credit to where I could become SAG. Um, and then once I got that first feature film to where I could become SAG, then I, um, the year after that, I made the move out here. 
Um, and then, you know, then once, you know, when you first get to LA, you're just in the grind with everybody else. Like they, we're all out here trying to be in movies and on television shows. So you find some representation, uh, you figure out what you're good at and you audition for those shows and, you know, yeah. Well, I mean, one thing that I had noticed um, that came across right away in, in the scene, your first scene, is the fact that um, you have good comedic chops. And Thank you. I, I honestly thought that maybe you had done some stand-up, stuff like <laughs> that, because yeah, because your timing was impeccable. I and, appreciate uh, it. I appreciate it. But yes, I am a stand-up as well. So that's one of the things that I started doing once I got out here. Um, so yeah, man, it's, it's always a pleasure to hear that, um, especially because I haven't gotten a chance to do a ton of it yet. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that I'm trying to push into more now because I'm like, Hey man, I'm funny guys. Like, I don't know if y'all know, like I can, I can crack a joke or two. So, you know, throw me in those funny <laughs> scenes. Um, and it's been good. So over the last year, um, there's been a couple, there's been a couple more scenes that have, that have been more comedic and, um, hopefully I get to lean into that going forward. Well, it's great. So, I mean, so you, you get the call, I guess you went on an audition Correct. and, um, they, they liked you. So, I mean. So tell me about the process. You, you, you went for the audition and then how, how did it go from there? Um, yeah, so you go in, you get that audition. Um, and I can't remember if I had a call back for that one. Um, sometimes with the with the guest roles, like they'll just do one audition and they'll select from there. Um, so I think that one was like just one audition. And I actually found out the news while I was working on another show. So it was um, it was good, man. It's always like, you know, you're exciting. You like getting that, you get that new work or you got something that's coming up. Um, so it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. Um, and then what's actually funny is they, they had a pop-up like, so the marketing for Quantum Leap was like great. So out here in LA, you know, they're on the side of buses, there were billboards and I wasn't very familiar with the old show. So, you know, the way that I found out about the show was like all of them, all of the marketing. And then I ended up, you know, figuring out that I, I got a chance I um, auditioned for it and then, you know, I booked it. So it was, it was pretty cool. That's, that's great. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. I mean, so um, as as someone that's coming to the new Quantum Leap, mm -hmm. how familiar were you with the old one, if at all? Not at all. Yeah, not at all. Like, um, like not even having heard of it? or nah. Well, wow. I, think I've, I, think I've, I think I've heard of it, but I've, I've never seen an episode. Um, gotcha. And honestly, I haven't started watching this one yet either. I was waiting for my episode, and then I'll probably just watch all the episodes up to my episode um, since I'm in the 15th one. But yeah, I had, I had no... I had no, you know, I hadn't been exposed to the first show. So, you know, before I went on, on the new version, you know, I, I looked it up and, you know, saw what it was all about. Was a super cool idea. Um, and, you know, I'm glad they brought it back. I'm glad I got to be a part of it. So, I mean, is that a surreal experience, not knowing the premise of the show, say like you have a leaper that can leap into anybody, men and women included, uh, coming on to set the first day, you meet Raymond Lee and he's in a smart pantsuit or no, he's wearing a skirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got his, got his little, got his heels on too, man. It was fun, man. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was great. Um, like obviously, you know, we get the script before we get to set. So I, I was, I was aware somebody was going to be um, cross-dressing. Um, when we got, when I got there, but, um, it was fun, man. Um, Raymond's, Raymond's great. Um, he really, he really was great. He was a joy to work with. Um, we, we had a great time working together. Hopefully that showed up in the scene. I don't know. Was it funny? Did it, did it feel good? You were like, funny. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. But no, it was, it was a, it was a great experience, man. We were having a good time. Um, so yeah, we were, we were cracking jokes about his outfit. We were cracking jokes about my outfit. You know what I mean? Like, so we were, we were having fun, man. It was a ball. I know that you had um, most of your direct scenes with Raymond, but but mm -hmm. being on the set, were were you able to interact with anybody else in the main cast? No, I didn't get a chance to um, work with any of the of the leads because um, you know my character, like you said, most of that scenes were with him because he had leaped into my lawyer. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, no, not really. So you know that sucks, but you know Raymond was a great guy, man. gave gave some great advice. Um, yeah, it was awesome. That's terrific. Now, one thing that we noticed about this episode, it was a lot more frenetic than um, episodes that have led up to it. And um, usually there's much more of a central storyline. And this one did have a central storyline of the, the, the kid being wrongly accused of murder. But mm -hmm. there was so many different asides, so much different. Um, you know, he, Raymond is going here and then he's just he's distracted to go there. And it's it just a, like a frenetic energy in the show. Can you describe the energy on the set? Did it sort of match the pacing that they were trying to go for for the episode? You know, while while we're filming, 
you you don't really feel that right because the the logistics you know when the camera isn't rolling is pretty much you know having everybody where they're supposed to be um a, a lot of effort goes into that so once we get to set um and then you're you know you're in the world and you're just kind of immersed in your scene so you don't get the uh you you don't you don't get the buzz that I think the viewer gets when they feel like they're like leaping around or jump cutting to different scenes. For me, you know, I, I spent I spent the whole day like essentially you know in the same building because that's where my sets were. You know, like it's like okay, mm -hmm. first we're we're right in the in the office and then we're in the hallway. You know, then we're in the elevator. So yeah, it, was, right. it was it was pretty calm for me. In order to get the energy that they needed for your character, which was, again, most of the comic relief, I mean, did you have discussions with the director and with, with maybe with, with the producers on exactly how they wanted you to approach the character? And uh, what was that process um, like? A lot of the time, they, they kind of, I feel like they kind of let you show up and, and see what you're bringing to the table um, because, you know, they've, they've cast you already for your choices so you try to keep it pretty close to like what you were doing in your audition because of clearly that's what they like to get you there um mm -hmm. and so from there uh when at least for me what i love is when you're kind of allowed wiggle room to improv find what's in the scene stuff like that now there wasn't much improv as far as like the lines for this one but she did let us play in the scene with the physicality um and and how the situation was making my character feel um and she definitely when you say into that when, when you say she, I assume you mean the oh, director. Oh, Kristen, yes. Kristen Wendell, the director. It's amazing. Um, Kristen, cast me again for anything you have going on. I will be there. <laughs> no, she she was amazing to work with. Um, and and that, that means the world also, like, as an actor, you know, be, being on a set to where the where the director trusts you and kind of gives you freedom to do your thing and find some dope things in there. It was, it was amazing. Well, that's great. I mean, is that typical for um, the TV work that you've done? What, what, how does the Quantum Leap set dif differentiate itself, or does it? Ooh, um, yeah. It's, I think it's it's very it, it's very like well, some shows are very strict, right? Um, as far as it being like word perfect or the lines, and I get that because they pay those writers a lot of money to write the shows. Um, so they they be like, no, write say what's on the script, you know, because it's you know we paid somebody a lot of money to write this. Um, and that's it. But some people do allow you a little bit of, you know, wiggle room to to improv some lines in there or or maybe to add something at the end. You, maybe you get a button on top of like your lines. Um, and that's always fun. Like now I have friends who don't really love improv, but, you know, the comedic background for me, like that's always fun. I, th I think there's a lot of things that you can find um, that just naturally come out that you wouldn't even know would be there until you're in the moment with another actor. Gotcha. So, I mean, just that, that playing off of one another, I guess that involves a lot of trust. For sure. For sure. And and same thing, like as far as like having a director who trusts you to do that, um, being in a scene with an actor that you have a good, um, you know, rapport with or that you either, you know, you guys just pick up a vibe really quick, like that give and take, you know, you, you it requires both. If not, you know, you clash. So it's important to have somebody who is either good at improv or you guys are just really in tune with each other. Yeah, we've heard a lot of good things from the set of Quantum Leap um, in terms of just just how welcome they make everybody feel. No, it, it's it's nice, man. Um, it was it was kind of a gross day, like it was raining a lot that day when I was filming. Um, yeah, as soon as you get there, bring you the big like Parker raincoat. You know, people escorting you around with with the umbrellas, super friendly. Nobody seems like you know like they're being forced to be there. You know, sometimes you know those days on set can get long, especially for crew. You know. You're talking about 14, 18 hour days, 20, you know, so like I would like however long they have to be there to to get it done. Um, so when you have people who are in those positions and they're, you know, they're speaking to you like it's the middle of the day and they're having like the best day ever and like the sun shining and birds are chirping like it's, it's a, <laughs> it makes you feel more welcome and it, it makes your job a lot easier to do for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does. So, I mean, if, if we can cycle out from Quantum and we were talking about maybe other experiences you, you, you've had, um, are there other projects that you're currently working on? Um, there is a show called Lace that I'm on. That is, it has been filmed. So they, they shoot that whole season and, that, and then that comes out later. I don't think that one comes out until September. Um, I'm also in a movie called The Re-Education of Molly Singer. Um, and that one is starring Jamie Presley and Ty Simpkins. That's due to come out, released later this year too. Um, I have no idea when either of those will be out. <laughs> like they don't, <laughs> like they tell I come, I, I do, I do my thing, and then I, I hear about it in the news or you know, or on TV. 
do you feel like it's it's a different experience if you're working on say a feature film as opposed to a TV show like Quantum Leap? For do you sure. You have to approach those kinds For of jobs sure. differently. Yeah. Um, like when yeah, when you get to work on like the the big shows, something like Quantum Leap, the the big network shows, because it's because they have an order and it's very regimented and they have like deadlines and there's a schedule, so you know when things are coming. Like I, I knew exactly when my episode was going to come. All I had to do was look at IMDb or you can just Google, you know, when episode 15 is going to come out. Like if you do a feature film, ooh, there's, there's absolutely, there's no telling. There's no telling. That thing gets stuck in post or something happens with the distributors or if it is something that's going to have like a, a theater release and they, maybe they don't want to go up against, you know, something big that's coming out, you know, like, oh, Creed and, and Ant-Man are out right now. It's, it's a little <laughs> boutique comedy. So we're going to wait a month, you know, like all of that type of stuff. So you you have no idea. And the producers aren't communicating that with everybody. Like they may communicate it with like, you know, your top two, two actors who may have some production points on the on the feature. But for the rest of us, we're just let us let us know if there's a red carpet, you know, we'll come come suited and booted. <laughs> so you'd mentioned that you had started on some stand-up work are you doing any live stand-up shows anything like that yes um i just got back into it so i'm not currently booked and i'm in the past i did a lot over at flappers and at the ha ha club um so i don't have any dates for anybody right this second but be on the lookout for me um and you can also follow me on instagram that's mr mr underscore nate walker um, and you'll definitely be able to get all of my information and obviously anything that's releasing, I'll be, you know, putting that information there. Well, that's great. Yeah. And I, I think that, um, it's great that, you know, you're out in different areas doing sort of that cross pollination, because I feel like all of the sitcoms since the beginning of time have come from, you know, the, the, the comedy stylings of the lead character, right from Jackie Gleason up to. For sure. Ray Romano or Kevin James. So for sure. I think, yeah. If you're gonna work on your comedy chops, that might be a good formula to do. It, yes, you know? yes. Um, it's it's definitely one of the reasons why I did it, you know, to, to work on the chops. I think there's a presence um that is required uh in in that and it plays into so many different parts of your life. And I think it also can directly help your acting as well. So if we can get back to Quantum Leap, um, it looked like you guys were in a busy uh court setting was what right. was that a location shoot or were those all sets how, how did that um, work? those were sets yeah we weren't in a real courthouse so yep those were that was a set um so pretty much like it, it, it I, like for somebody who's never been to like la or been inside of a studio um I just imagine like a big space almost a warehouse or something mm -hmm. right um and then they just go in there and they work magic man they build they build anything you know like you you're outside and it looks like this warehouse building and you walk in and you go around the corner and you're you're in a courtroom and then there's offices and they have like an elevator um set that's built up and it may not be functional but it, it looks like you're in a in a courtroom or in a you know in a in a public building downtown um so it's amazing man it's amazing what they do um all the guys who work in production design and set design uh they're, they're very talented people and and that part of it is again that makes your job easy as an actor you know like when you go in there and then you, you forget that you're not in a courtroom mm -hmm. yeah it's an immersive experience mm -hmm, for sure yeah That's yep so, so they put you in there they throw some handcuffs on you and take your clothes <laughs> off and now you know it's, it's a real thing like <laughs> it's the, the stake the stakes are up the stakes are up like <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. So, I mean, um, did you get any uh, a any good swag while you were on set? I think you. you <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I got that. All right. Yeah. Quantum Leap, you got to bring my character back, man. I'm out here wearing the hat for you on the podcast. Well, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, let's see how that can happen. I mean, uh, Ray, Ben. Ben kind of rescued your character anyway. He gave sure. him the right yeah. advice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, my character. I don't. I, I. I don't know that my character will be back, but um, it, it would be amazing. It. It would. It would be fun. Yeah. Now, I mean, since you weren't familiar with the show before, when you had read the script, were you surprised at sort of the, the nuance, or did you know much about Quantum Leap going in before you? I know that you said that you weren't a fan of the original, right. but had you heard anything about the the reboot series uh, besides um, the script that you read? You no, know, well, you kind of you just go do some research. Um, 
at least I try to, right? Like anytime you get an audition, like I, I, I go sit, like, what's the show about, right? Like, and you need to know that stuff before you do the audition because that, that becomes a part of your process, right? Like, what's the tone? Um, is, is it, is there room for comedy in this or is this like very, you know, is this very straight? Like, is this CSI or, you know, like mm-hmm. if you're going to audition for Shameless or, or go out for something like The Office, you know, those, that, the comedy worlds are very different and it's the same thing from drama. So like, I, I definitely went and looked it up. I was like, okay, what's going on here? Um, and yeah, I had to, cause I like, it wouldn't have made sense. I'm like, what is, what is happening? You know what I mean? Like the, it, it, it wouldn't make sense to you. I don't think if you didn't understand the world that you were about to, you know, be a part of. Yeah. I mean, thank you for bringing up shameless. That's always been one of my favorite programs. Can you tell me a little bit about the time that you spent filming, filming that? Was that, is that shot, yeah. shot in LA? Like where is yeah, shame? Um, Cause it, well, I, I think for the fur, I think most of the seasons were actually shot in Chicago, okay. but remember the tail end of it, we, they got hit with COVID. So when I, when I shot was actually when it was like very, very strict everywhere you go, we're still wearing masks, you know what I mean? Six feet. Um, so that is why they ended up shooting out here because the location stuff maybe wasn't as safe or not as controlled as them just putting it inside of a studio environment out here in LA for the final season. Um, but it was amazing, man. Um, one of the coolest things, uh, cause I was a huge fan of the show. Um, William H. Macy is an animal uh, to me, as far as when it comes to acting, like he, he is, he's very good, very talented. Um, I've watched a lot of his uh, scenes and just, um, just studied, um, but it was it was crazy because um, I did a studio tour when I first came to L.A. And I thought I was going to be late because they had already announced that Shameless was going to end. So, you know, obviously one of your favorite shows, you're like, man, I, I really hope I get a chance to be on this. So I took pictures in front of the Patsy Pies, like on the lot over there while I was just like on a studio tour. And then like a two, two years later, I ended up getting cast and I was literally in the season finale episode. That's and great. and my scene was with William H Macy, and I got to meet him, and, and it was really dope. It was great. Now we blew him up, we killed him, but um, <laughs> he was uh, <laughs> he was it was awesome. Yeah, and how how does that differ? I mean, um, that's a show we had discussed. Like you you didn't really know about Quantum coming in. It's a great experience to be asked to be on the show, but I have to think it's a whole nother level when it's it's a show that's one of your favorites. Then yeah, you get yeah. to be on it. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I think it's um. Yeah, it just touches you a little different, you know. It, it, it does for sure. It, it's it was one of those things where it's like, oh man, I'm looking at Frank right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> you feeling the extra like pressure, <laughs> right? Does he drink like that in real life? I don't know. Like you know, like. <laughs> but um, um, I think it can add pressure, all depending on the scenario. Um, I, I've been fortunate that every time I've I've been able to act with somebody who um you know I had seen a lot of or or you know admired, um they were they were great to me. Um, and, and it was no different with William. He was, he was fantastic. And, uh, you know, hopefully I get to work with him again. Yeah. I mean, that, that show is epic. So, um, yeah, it's uh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was was great. It was great. It was awesome. So if we can just, um, circle back to quantum leap, uh, is there anything, um, from the set or just about the experience that we haven't discussed that we haven't touched upon that, that you would like to express to the leapers that are out there listening? Um, just really that Ray- Raymond is a genuinely a really good guy, man. Um, as far as, you know, being a newer actor, you know, to LA, like myself, you know, or people who have been out here a long time, he was just, he was sharing with me, like some of his role. Cause you know, his, he, he's kind of like really like at the peak of like his success right now. Like it's, it's his, it really just took off for him in the last like year or so. Like he just did Top Gun. Um, I think he had something else and then, you know, he books this show and this show is doing great. Um, you know, so now his face is all over the walls, but I mean, for him, you know, he was saying just a couple years ago, he feels like he wasn't too far from where I'm at. Um, and so just some of the knowledge and stuff that he gave me and, and taking that time out to speak to somebody else who's trying to get to the level that he's at, it was, um, that type of stuff means everything, you know? So it's great. That's terrific. That's yeah. terrific. Maybe, maybe in a couple of years time, we'll see your face on the side of a giant building. In I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, hopefully I get to have my clothes on, but you know. <laughs> well, Nate, thank you so much for the time you've spent with us here on the Quantum Leap Podcast. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you guys so much for having me, man. It's great. 